evening, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat. I'm Gina from Gina K Designs, and I'd like to welcome everyone from all over the United States and all over the world. It is great to see you all here on a Monday night. A friend of mine, Greg, posted on Facebook today, is this just the Mondayest Monday ever? And it was. I'm telling you, all kinds of crazy things going on out there in the world today. Um, our Facebook my Facebook, my personal Facebook, somebody copied my Facebook account and they're trying to friend all of my friends and it's just crazy. So I was able to get the logo taken down today and the banner taken down today as my copyrighted intellectual property. So I felt so victorious, but it took all day to do it. And it was truly the Mondayest Monday. So I am ready for some crafting and I hope you guys are too. Uh, you guys all have a great weekend. I hope you did. It was really hot here in Wisconsin. Um, and especially after coming off a little getaway in Florida. And I know that sounds like it should be hot, hotter in Florida, but when you're right on the beach, that cool water and cool air feels so good. It doesn't feel the same out here in Wisconsin, I'll tell you that. So, But it is great to see you. Now tonight, I thought it would be kind of fun to do a little ink blended project. And I did want to use our incentive set one more time before I really break into the kit. So I'm going to do this tonight. I'm going to play with the new incentive set because I know a lot of you have earned this set and you're excited to use it. I also thought I would use the window die again. And um, I was playing around with some ideas and Tom had a great idea for whitewashing wood. So we're gonna do that tonight and we're gonna make the window appear as though it's kind of got whitewashed wood around it. And then I also wanted to show you how, even though this particular rectangle die comes with the window die in the Master Layouts 5 set, you can swap out this rectangle die for the bigger one in either Master Layouts 2 or Master Layouts 1, and you can have a lot more space around the outside of your window. So we're going to do that tonight as well. So it is great to see everybody. I see everybody jumping in here. I know a lot of you are home having dinner. Some of you, depending on where you are, are just getting home from work. Maybe you're not even home yet and you're just listening in the car. But it is great to see all of you. Thank you for being here this evening. Uh, another note of good news. I know some of you have been calling customer service wondering about your order and how fast we're shipping. Our shipping team, our whole team, because it takes everybody to do this, got almost 500 orders out today. So the number was like 497. And I think that's pretty amazing. So um, we're really moving quickly through the orders. So yay, hopefully you guys will get your stuff really soon. All right, so here's my idea. Let's go over to the overhead. So I'm going to start here with a piece of white cardstock. And this is just a quarter sheet of cardstock. I'm starting with this because I am going to cut it down, but I wanted to start with the bigger, um, the bigger piece so that if my wood graining is imperfect around the edges, I'm going to end up cutting it off anyway. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to use, instead of doing like a blue or a brown, making it kind of wood, I'm going to use soft stone. So I was in here playing in my craft room and Tom said, wouldn't it be great to do like a whitewashed look for wood? And I thought, this is the perfect color for creating that. And you might not think that gray would look good, but it really does give you the look of that beachy kind of whitewashed wood. So let's start with that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use just this edge of the ink pad. And this is what I really like about a rectangular or a square ink pad. It's really, really easy to do the wood grain technique. And because you have that those straight, sharp edges, you can also create the look of planks at the same time. So I'm going to start up here at the top and I'm just going to run this down like this. You can already see that this just looks a little bit like whitewashed wood, right? And then we're gonna add a few of those little plank lines. I'm going to just use the edge of the ink pad. And I'm gonna just tilt my hand a little bit. Let me show you what that would look like from this angle. So I was just, I'm just gonna tilt my hand in a little bit toward the paper when I, when I rub it down very lightly. See how I kind of created a board there? Not heavy, 
Just a nice light touch. There. Doesn't that look like wood now a little bit more? Looks like those planks of wood. Love that. So this color is soft stone. It is the perfect color to create that whitewashed look. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the dies from the Master Layouts 1 die set. So this is the original, the one that started it all. It's a very simple die set, and it's perfect for A2 cards. And I know a lot of you have been asking for the 5 by 7 So I do want you to know that we are pricing that out because, remember, the dies are priced by the amount of steel that you use to make them. And even though it doesn't seem like there's anything going on inside here, did we freeze up, Tom? I think we froze up. Oh, no. Oh, jeepers. Well, I don't know. I guess you guys will tell me if we... Is that better? Okay. Is that better? So we called our... Um, our internet provider today, and they're actually coming out tomorrow to figure out what is wrong with our internet here and why our upload speed isn't what we are paying for. So I promise you, this is gonna get a lot better over the next, um, the next live. Okay, so the thing that I love about this, this is perfect for A2 size cards, and I think I was talking about five by sevens. Even though these dies are big and open, it still takes this same amount of steel. You can put things inside, but it still takes the same amount of steel. So when you're doing a five by seven uh, die set, it can get very pricey. So we're pricing it out right now. We're going to see what we can do because I know a lot of you are hoping for something big like that. Okay. All right. Glad I'm back. I am back. I don't know what's going on. And we have a lot, we had a lot of trolls. So Tom was really busy taking care of the trolls too. All right, so now you can see that's a little bit, not, you know, all that, this stuff at the top here, you don't see it anymore. You just see the little bit of wood grain, but maybe you like that look. And if you like that look, you can certainly add it um, to the edge. I do kind of like that look, so I might add it real quick. Let me just move this out of the way and then we'll cut the window. So I do like having a little bit of that darker gray near the top like that. I'm just rubbing it against the top. Just kind of finishes it off a little bit. See what I'm saying? And then I think I'm going to darken up this side right there. Hey, can you use um, cubes for that? You can use ink cubes for this. And my daughter, Rena, who has done a lot of videos for us in the past, she has wood graining on her YouTube, YouTube channel using ink cubes. You know, ink cubes are like the perfect little size to do a plank of wood. So it's really a nice, um, it's actually perfect. So yes, ink cubes work really well to do wood graining. Okay, so now we're going to add the window into this piece right here. So we've got our whitewashed wood. Now what I want to do, and the reason why I'm using the largest master layout set that we have, which is the um, master layouts one, is because I want this window to sit up fairly high on this piece of cardstock because I want room down here at the bottom to add a greeting. A troll is somebody that comes in and just writes spam comments. Gina Marie, that's what a, a troll is. And so when you see them, Everybody starts telling Tom that there's a troll, but believe it or not, he is like, he's like Hawkeye. He is just watching that, the comment section coming in from Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. It all funnels into one spot in our computer, and he can watch everybody all over at the same time. Okay, so I've got this window sitting up higher on the paper, and now I'm going to cut it out. Yes, I'm using soft stone ink for the whitewashed look. And remember, like I said before, 
save all these little pieces because they make great little party flags going across the top of your card or your scrapbook layout where you can stamp letters in there, alphabets, little designs, spell out happy birthday, make a party flag. And also these are great for doing a mosaic kind of look. They look pretty cool. I call them Scrabble tiles. They're a little big for Scrabble tiles, but I think they're still fun for something like that. And then what you have left is this beautiful window. Isn't that pretty? All right. Uh, why did I decide? Uh, Stacy, I am still on YouTube. I'm on YouTube, I'm on Facebook, and I added Twitch as a third platform for some of our users that watch us over on Twitch. Um, no particular reason other than there's people over there that are doing DIY. So I decided to throw it into the mix. It doesn't take away from YouTube or Facebook. So I didn't think it would hurt anything. All right. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut a white panel that's going to go behind this window. And then I'm going to do some ink blending on that. And then we're going to stamp a scene in this window. All right, so let's go to the overhead here. Now I have my little We Are Memory Keepers cutter. This measures three and three quarters by five. So I'm gonna cut this one down to three and a half by four and three quarters, because I want it to be smaller underneath, right? I want it to be smaller so that it doesn't show on the other side. Okay. Then I'm going to get a piece of paper here. Now, one thing that I wanna show you that you can do, let me zoom in a little bit for this ink blending part. Okay, so if you wanna know where you're going to be stamping, you can lay out your die on here. And I'm gonna show you that after we do the ink blending. So keep your die, don't put your die away when you start ink blending. Now, the colors that I'm going to use tonight, I want to create a sunset where the sun is really, really low in the sky. And Pamela, you definitely could put a piece of clear plastic behind the window. You could also put some vellum behind the window if you wanted it to look a little bit more hazy. It would not distract at all. In fact, that would be perfect to turn it into a shaker card. Okay. And Denise, what I, the shelves I have behind me, they are by Ikea, and they are the Kalix, K-A-L-L-A-X, Kalix units. Okay, trying to look at everybody's questions while I'm doing my thing here. So I want to create the look of a sunset that's very, very low in the sky because I wanted to, I want a lot of night sky in this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to put my die right about up here like this. And then I'm gonna get a pencil or a pen. Let me see what I have in my little thing here. And I'm just going to make a little mark up here, a little mark over here, and a little mark here, a little mark here. Okay. And actually, I didn't have to go up that high, so let's flip it over. I wanna, I wanna go pretty high. Let me see how this looks. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go a little lower. So let's go down more in the middle, but I definitely want to have, I want to know where my window is. Do you know what I mean? Because I want to make sure that when I do my ink blending that all of my sun isn't way down here and then it's not going to show up in my window. So this just gives me a little guide of where my window is going to be. Now I'm going to start with a a vibrant color. This is my sun. So I'm going to use some sweet mango and I'm going to get sweet mango up to, you know, maybe about here over the line. So I don't want it to go far over the line. So I'm inking up my blending brush. Oh, I'm so glad you got your, your master layout set today, Sue. It is so much fun. You're going to love playing with five. Master layouts five is a fun one. Okay, so I'm bringing this up just to about there. And you can see now, when I have my die there, that's where the sun is going to be in the sky, like very, very low. Okay, so I started with that. Now I'm going to add some pink. 
so the pink that I'm going to use, I want a more orangey pink, not a bluish pink. So I really like Dusty Rose for that. Dusty Rose definitely has a little bit of coral in it. So it's a great blend to match with Sweet Mango. Welcome, everyone. I see you guys coming in. It's so great to see you all. I think we're back on track now with our schedule. So we are back on Monday nights and Thursday at lunchtime. All right, now I'm going to use the Dusty Rose, and I'm going to work that right into that Sweet Mango going right across. And don't worry if it doesn't look super blended because you know our inks. That is like the best thing about our inks is how I almost want to call them self-blending inks. I know that's crazy, but it's really true. When they dry, like if, if you look at it and go, oh, I don't like it, and you throw it in the trash, all of a sudden that's going to catch your eye in the trash and it's going to look so beautiful and blended. You're going to be like, what was I thinking? I've thrown things in the trash too, thinking, oh, it's not blended enough. So now I've used that dusty rose. I'm going to go back with my sweet mango and just go right along the line between them just to really turn that more into a coral. Okay. So once again, you can see that is the extent of where my light is going to be. And now I'm going to start to bring in the blues. So I definitely wanted to go orange to pink because pink is going to blend in better with turquoise than it than the orange would blend with the turquoise. So you still want to try to make sure that your colors are going to blend nicely together. Suzanne, I go on live on um, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch at noon central time. So that's what time my lunchtime live is. It's not lunchtime for everyone. In fact, some of our friends are just having breakfast. And some of you, it's 6 o'clock at night. It's dinner. Um, but that's what time it is, 12 central. I call it lunchtime live because it's my lunchtime. All right, so now I'm going to blend um, my turquoise sea into this pink. And this is going to look a little funky at first. But we're going to get it to blend. And we're going to get it to look a little bit more violet along the line. Okay. And I'm sorry if I missed some of your questions. Sometimes I have to look down and see what I'm doing <laughs> or else nobody will watch because it's going to get bad. Okay. So you see now I've created a little bit of lilac in there. See how that goes? I do like that. <laughs> Okay, a little bit more. We're going to go down just a little bit more into that. And I'm curving just a little bit too. You can see I'm kind of like curving just a little bit. I don't know that you're going to see that, but if all we were doing was ink blending and we were going to stamp a silhouette stamp, it does look kind of nice to have that curve. And then I can go back over the line with that dusty rose just to bring in a little bit more of that purple. Welcome, welcome. I see you guys coming in. We're really starting to fill up here. That's great. I love seeing you guys. Okay, so now I'm going to use blue. And the blue that I'm going to use is blue denim. Yes, the window, the kit is available now. And the window is part of the Master Layouts 5 set. And that's available now as well. You can get both the Master Layouts 5 and the new kit. All right, so I'm going to go with blue denim. And this is, this is a very dark color. So I always hold my breath when I'm trying to blend blue denim down into a lighter color, but I can do it. And I'm gonna take it all the way up to the edge here. Okay. I'm gonna come down onto the sides a little bit. And then I'm going to go back over that with my turquoise sea brush and really get some turquoise in there. And again, back with the blue denim. Now I can still see my lines. I don't know if you guys can see them, but I can still see them there. I'm going to do just a little bit more. And this is really, I mean, you guys have all seen this sky, right? You've seen this at night where it's like, whoa. And now I'm going to add the last color I'm going to add in the navy. And this is our darkest blue. 
And I'm using that same brush because now I'm not going to really worry about it. And this is a very dark color. This will give you that dark night sky. And I don't know how much of this is going to show, but enough of it's going to show that I definitely want to add it because I think it makes all the difference. Newbie question, what's an A2 card? An A2 card, A2 is a size. So um, basically, a lot of card makers like to take an 8.5 by 11 sheet of cardstock and cut it in half and fold it. And that makes the card 5.5 inches by 4 and a quarter inches, and that's considered A2. There's other sizes like A7 and A6. I'm just going back over this with my turquoise just to blend it all together a little bit more. Okay. So you can see that, huh? Yes, you could definitely put some stars in the darkest part for sure. And I might do something like that. That is a good idea, Annette. Okay. You know what I was thinking of doing it with too? I have this little jelly roll pen, so it's a little bit sparkly, you know, and when you turn it, it'll twinkle a little bit. I think maybe I'll do that. I don't know how it's gonna look, but I'm gonna give it a shot. All right, so now one more time, let's just darken up our lines so that we can really see where, oh, look how pretty that is. Isn't that pretty? Really wanna see um, where it's going. So we'll darken up that line. There we go. And there. All right. So now I can see it. I don't know if you guys can see it sometimes the way it glares, but I think you can see the top line. Okay. So now the next thing that I want to do is I want to stamp. Like I said, I was going to use this little stamp set. And for those of you who haven't seen it, this is the new incentive set. It's called Painted Blossoms, and it's yours free with any $75 purchase. And so lots of you have this one coming. And we got a lot of these. We made sure that we didn't run out of these. So, um, And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp the stems, and I want to make sure that the stems just go right below that little line. I don't want the bottom of the stems to be sticking out through the window. I want it to sink down a little bit. Okay. Oh, Donna, your family interrupted you right during the ink blending? That is rude. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put this on a big skinny block here. I like kind of holding the ends of this block. I feel like I have a little more control. And then I'm going to stamp this. We want this to look like a silhouette. Like we're looking out the window and we don't see any uh, color in these flowers or in any of this stuff. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go with black onyx. And remember, this is a sketchy set, so there's parts of it that aren't perfect. It's intended to not be perfect. And we're going to go just below that line. So now I talk too much and my ink is drying. Okay, right below the line. And I'm centering it. Centering it like between those two lines. So again, when that goes on there, you'll see that these stems will be hidden. Okay. Right? The nerve. The nerve of somebody interrupting you during ink blending. What are they, hungry? <laughs> on a Stampin' Chat Live, everybody, everybody order pizza. We'll keep the pizza places in business. And... Okay, now, I don't know if you guys know this, but in my card that I made on release party night, which was this card with this set. I did a thumping technique and that's really fun. But there are other little flower heads that you can use. You can make them these little tulips or you can make them these little fluffy flowers. So I think I might try doing these little fluffers. I haven't used these yet. So I am going to test it first. And I always like to have just a little piece of cardstock somewhere. I know I have one somewhere. Wait, it's probably in my drawer over here. Let me grab a scrap piece. Uh, so, you know, I'll tell you what. My, <laughs> I'll get a piece. Here we go. Here's a scrap piece. 
my uh, my stamp room at home, I had a whole drawer full of quarter sheets of white. And guess where it is? It's still there at home when I need it. Okay, so this is what these little flowers look like in comparison to the cone flower. So it's just something different. Do you like the cone flower better or do you guys like this better? Tom, you'll have to scroll some comments for me so I can see. So I could use the little fluffer or I could use, I could use this one too. This is a cute flower. Let's see. I'll try this one. We'll see what this one looks like. Oh, that's so cute. Maybe I'll use this one. Cone, you guys like more of a, oh, you like this, the cone flowers, the whole strip all at once. Fluffer, cone, cone, fluffer. <laughs> Try the fluffer. Okay. All right. I'll use the fluffer since I already used the, the cone flower. That's good. Okay. I like that idea. Um, let's do that. Okay. So I'm going to stamp the middle one first. And this this flower is neat because you can you can turn it as you go so the flowers look different from each other. So I'll turn this one. See they're facing differently now, so they don't look exactly the same. Do one there. Well, let's see. I could mix these in there too, these little tulip things. So it looks like I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do this little tulip guy. Let's see what he looks like. Yeah, that's cute too. So this is like mixed flowers in the yard. Okay. So there I have my little flower garden right outside of my window. It's gonna be. It is fun to try and just mix it up and see how it looks. Now here is why I, these lines are so important because this is gonna go here, right? Now I wanna bring some branches in. So I want it to look like I've got trees that are just kind of hanging and their branches are just hanging on the other side of the window. So I'm gonna take this stamp right here, this one. And then I want to put them, let's see here. I want to put them, I want to put one here. And then I want to put one just kind of coming up like this. Okay, now that looks really weird, but when this goes on top, See how that's going to look? It's coming in from the window. It's peeking through. Isn't that pretty? Yes, this really would make a nice sympathy card. The colors are so peaceful. Okay. All right. So, yes, it would definitely look beautiful upside down, too, for sure. Oh, this is a seagull? Yeah, it definitely would look like a little seagull. And I don't know if you knew, but in the kit... This is the um, the Time to Coast set. It's got some single seagulls. It's got this one, and then it's got these two little birds here. So if you wanted some single seagulls, maybe we'll throw that in there. That's a really good idea. Then it would be like, oh my gosh, they're at the beach, even though you can't really see the water. Okay, so now I'm going to use this stamp. And remember, these stamps are amazing in the wreath builder if you want to make wreaths and these flowers and all. But this, I'm going to have this kind of like draping in from higher up. All right. So again, I want to look at where my window is going to go. And I think I'll have them kind of coming in and maybe one even peeking up really pretty high. Okay. So this is going to go in like right here. Like that. And then I'm gonna kind of fan it. One there, and then one just kind of up here. Okay, so now when we put this back on top, see how that looks? Oh, I love that. That's so pretty. 
So do you think it's too late at night for a seagull? I guess if he was low in the sky, maybe over here, we could squeeze him in. Let's squeeze him in. He'll be like that one seagull that stayed too late at the bar. <laughs> All the other seagulls are like, where's Harold? He should be back by now. He's just flying at night. No GPS. All right, so we're going to put him in. We'll just put him way in the back. <laughs> Oh, guys, I don't know what I'm talking about half the time. I do want to make sure that we can see him though. So let's just lay the window where it needs to be because it doesn't really make sense if we can't see him. I don't know. Maybe we should leave Harold out of this. I think I'm going to leave Harold out of this. We'll get him in another, in another window at another time. <laughs> I should have planned better for him. Sorry, Harold. Go home and sleep it off. Okay. So now... <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for humoring me. <laughs> now, we could spritz this with water and get a little watery effect on there if we wanted. But remember that that black is also a dye ink. So if you do that, you have to be very, very careful. I think we should try it and see what happens because it's early in the night, right? It's only 730 I have time to redeem myself, I think. So I have my Tim Holtz spritzer here. This is the Dispress Strayer. <laughs> Maybe Gina had one too many. Um, this is the Distress Sprayer. And what I like to do before I use it is I like to spray it and really like get the tube filled up because if it's sitting for a while, sometimes the water leaks back out and then you get the, you know, splotchiness. So I'm going to spray it a little bit so I have a finer mist and then I'm going to Spray it like that, and then I'm just going to dry it real quickly. Do one more. Okay. And then dry it real quickly. In fact, I'm going to use my heat tool to dry it. And that just gives my sky a little texture. And I don't know if you can see that texture. There's a lot of texture right there. But it didn't make my... Uh, my flowers or anything run, so that's good. That darn fruit salad, that's right. <laughs> okay, so can you guys see now that little white texture in there? Hopefully you can. Can they see that, Tom? Can you see that? Yes. Okay, good. So then I'm going to take my gel pen. And this is the Sakura Stardust pen. And I'm just going to add... Just some little tiny, maybe my paper's too wet. Let me gonna add some just little tiny twinkles randomly. Now, I don't know if this is showing up at all for you guys, but when I take my photo, I will definitely try to take it at an angle where you could see this. Let's see if I can get it to sparkle at all. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can see that? So that kind of makes it feel like um, just the stars are shimmering in the sky a little bit. And remember the stars, I don't, you know, it doesn't have to be totally pitch black out for you to be able to see the stars. Um, I see them, you know, some of the bigger ones when when it just starts getting dusk like this. The pen that I'm using is a jelly roll pen. It's called a Sakura Stardust pen. S A K U R A, Sakura Stardust. It's very similar to Wink of Stella if you have that pen. You could also use a white gel pen, but I really do like the little bit of shimmer that you get from that. So, okay. So there we have our little uh, bit of texture in there. So now, let's see. Your, the YouTube feed is farther along than Facebook. Yeah, I don't know why that is, and sometimes that happens. Okay, so then we're gonna pop this up, and all of that is just going to be looking out the window there, that whitewashed window. That's so pretty, Tom. That was a great idea. And we could go a little bit lower and we could cut a little bit of that off. So let's do that. Let's, let me have a heart attack here and try that. 
I'm going to use my We Are Memory Keepers cutter and I'm just going to cut down a little bit off the top. So that should do it. Yep, that's good. I just don't want the top sticking out there, obviously. Now, another thing is if you have glitter, you can use, um, for example, you could dip a toothpick in Glitz Glitter Gel and just dot it on there. You could use um, stickles and add little stars. So, you know, if you don't have exactly what I have, try some of the things that you have. Use a tiny little glue pen and then use loose glitter. I know that's scary. Loose glitter is a little scary, but um, I'm gonna add just a couple more stars. Let's see. Just in this area here. And if you're really good and you know how to like do the big dipper and the little dipper, you could do those shapes too, which is kind of fun. Okay, so now what I want to do next is I want to put a greeting on here. But I, I thought about, here's one that I did earlier. I just put thanks so much on there like that. And I like it, but I really think that this needs a little bit of contrast color down here. So what I'm going to do, because I want to put this whole thing onto a navy card base like this. So then what I want to do is I want to put a navy greeting down here. So I have a little piece of in the navy card stock and I have my embossing magic pad and I'm going to emboss that. There we go. Yeah, and see, this kind of takes, this kind of changes the card. It's not necessarily a nautical card anymore, like the other ones that I did the first. Um, I did a, did I do those on Thursday, Tom? The nautical ones? I can't even remember. Now, this is from the kit. This is the Enjoyable Greetings. And I think what I want to do is, um, I think I want to, I want to use either, I am so grateful or let's celebrate you. I think I am so grateful would be a nice one because it's a very peaceful looking card and it, it would make a beautiful sympathy card. I don't have a sympathy greeting in this set. And I definitely want to use this set. So I might use I am so grateful or we could let's celebrate you. Um, I could look at some of my other strip sentiments too. I certainly have a lot of them in our collection, but let's just go with this for now. Um, let's do, let's celebrate you. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't mind getting a peaceful card where somebody wanted to celebrate me. I like the look of the peaceful cards. Tomorrow and every day would be nice too. Yeah, the only thing is some of these, like um, tomorrow and every day until the end of time, I can't put that on a strip. And I really feel like I need the big greeting with it then. Today, tomorrow, and every day until the end of time. And then I would put like, I love you today, tomorrow, and every day until the end of time, that kind of thing. So I, I wanna do just a single strip here. So I think I'll go with this, but of course, I agree with you. This would be much, much nicer as a sympathy card. Definitely could be used for that. Okay, so I'm stamping this with white pigment ink because that gives me a little bit of a white face for my white embossing powder. Now you can use Versamark or embossing ink, but when I use the white ink, I tend to like to use the white. I mean, when I'm doing like a greeting like this, I tend to like to use... Um, white pigment ink because if there's any little spots that the embossing powder missed you don't really notice it the same way that you do if you're using a clear ink i hope that makes sense i thought that was a good little tip and you know that little paintbrush that i always use that's home too so tonight's video is reminding me of all the things i need to pack in my car tomorrow and bring to work i do like being here better though okay so let's see. I'm sorry if the picture is blurry. Again, it seems like we get to a certain part of these lives lately and we're getting blurry, but we are going to get that fixed. They're coming tomorrow to see what's going on.
Okay. So there we have, let's celebrate you. Sorry guys, sorry about the blurriness. It is frustrating, but we are gonna do everything that we can to get it fixed. If not, I'm going home. <laughs> going back to going home, doing it at home. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. When we went out and went back in, we may have gone 1080 HD, Tom. It's possible. It's possible. Hey, okay. We, hey, we should explain to folks uh, we had a request for music, and I, I, um, certain like types of music, and I. Oh. You should explain why I can't do requests. You explain. Like, well, put your, put your we face have, in the mix. <laughs> they want to see you. Yeah, so we're not we're not really allowed to do with licensing laws. We're not allowed to do uh, like pop music, and um, you know, music that has a copyright. Yeah, so we're kind of um, restricted to. I, I wish I could take requests. I would love to play some things but um the licensing rules don't allow it on the various uh facebook and youtube and so that's why we don't take requests right now for music but we can do our own music so tom's what we do tom's writing some music too so uh, maybe he'll be able to play some of that for us which is going to be fun Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the flag dies from the Master Layouts 3. And that set, that has, that's the wreath builder set, the one that you would get if you want to cut out all of your squares for your wreath builder template. And I'm going to cut this out using this tiny one. It's not really a tiny one. It is the second to biggest in that set. Okay. So I think I want to be safe. Yeah, Tom writes beautiful music. So um, if he uh, if he can do some of his own music, that would be really fun. Can you share where your medical bracelet is from? Sure. My medical bracelet is from a company called Lauren's Hope. And okay, so here's what I did, guys. I, I really didn't even want to like mention it because sometimes I feel like it sounds like I don't know, it sounds weird to me, but our customer service does get lots of calls with with um, all kinds of questions. And some of you guys ask where my medical bracelet is from. Some of you guys ask what color lipstick I'm wearing. Some of you guys ask what color nail polish. Some of you guys ask where to get the little, um, the little tool that goes under here to spin the brush holder. So what I did was on our website, if you click on things I love, I put links to all of the things, including my medical bracelet. So if you go to ginakdesigns.com and click on the tab that says things I love, you will find a direct link to the medical bracelet over there. And all the other things that I've talked about in my lives, including just things that I've talked about. Like I, I remember one time I was telling you guys that I like this stuff called snail serum for my skin. <laughs> and a lot of you contacted customer service and said, what's the snail serum that Gina uses? So um, I thought I'd just make it easier for everybody. If there are, are any of the things that I've ever talked about in my live and you want to know what it is, you can go and find the links there. Okay. So now we're going to pop this onto the card. And I want to make sure that this looks even. So before I put this down on the card, I'm going to put some foam tape on here and I'm going to attach it to here. This way we know that it's in the right place. And hopefully the picture's cleared up a little bit. I think it has. Um, Tom, do you have a view of what's going on on your phone? Looks fine here. Oh, good. So I think it cleared up, but we're going to try to get that taken care of so it just doesn't do that anymore. So I'm using the Gina K Designs foam tape, and I'm making sure that this is nice and flat when I put that on there. Oh, I'm so glad that, yes, and sometimes it's weird because sometimes YouTube is clear and Facebook is a mess. So it's, <laughs> it's really hard to know exactly what you're going to get at any given time. 
with live video. All right. Now I'm going to just put this here and one here. I'm glad we're good for now. Oh, thank you, Mary. She said it's worth watching no matter what. Thank you. You're so kind. Okay. You're all so kind. I just uh, <laughs> quit worrying. Okay, I won't worry anymore. Worry is a wasted emotion, right? Worry is living in the future. Okay. Now, I got to line this up right. So I've got my little line here to help me. Kind of sticking to me a bit. And we'll go right there. There we go. Okay. Now we can put this onto the card base. And even though there's like some of the foam tape sticking out, that's okay. That'll just help the whole card stay down better. But you definitely want to well, that was weird. You definitely want to make sure that um, you have these two pieces put together before you mount it to your card. Alrighty. So I'm going to line this up. Looking straight down on it. Hopefully my head's not in the way. I don't think it is. Okay. Now I could stamp a greeting here, but doesn't this really just make all the difference? It just... I felt like it needed a little bit of color there, and that is just like the perfect little thing. So this would make a really nice birthday card. Let's celebrate you, somebody that's just a peaceful person, and they like that. Maybe they're celebrating a retirement. A nice retirement card, very peaceful. Maybe you just want to celebrate them because they're a great person. So I'm going to try to line this up here. Before I really push it down, I'll make sure it's straight and even. Look straight and even. All right, there, I'll push it down. Now, so that, that card, that looks kind of nice, huh? So now what I want to do is, this is hard to write in. You could have a white gel pen or a bright color gel pen or a silver Sharpie or something, and it would really show up nice in here. But I'm going to just do a quick little um, inside panel for this. So I'm going to use a piece of white cardstock, and I've got the layering white cardstock here. I know I'm very close. So let's back out a little bit. And then I'm going to cut this down to three and a half inches by four and three quarter inches. Is that what I want to do? No. What did I just do? Let me see. Oh, there's three and a half inches. Ha! Huh. Well, I have a strip that I can use. Three and a half inches by, that didn't look right, four and three quarter inches. That's a nice size for inside. It gives a nice wide navy border around the outside. And I'll just pop this right inside. Now, let me just tell you a little thing that I like to do, though. I'll finish this off in here. But what I like to do is I cut a bunch of these down. And I write my greeting first, and then I put it in my card. Because if I mess up the greeting, I, you know, I'm, it's not all stuck to the card already. So I really like having that, uh, that versatility. And then once you write on it, then you can just pop it right into your card like this. And if you feel you need more space, of course, you can add a second one at the top. Three and a half inches by four and three quarter inches. I did not cut that piece of card stock, stock up correctly. You guys know what I'm talking about. But you could put this up at the top the same way, and then you could have a top panel and a bottom panel if you want to write a lengthy message. Now, you could also add a flower in here. So we can do something like that. But I think if I did something like that, instead of doing a dark flower like I have on the outside for the inside of the card, I think what I would like to use is the soft stone. So this way it doesn't get in the way. And you'd never see the soft stone down here. So what I'm gonna do is, 
And this way we can use the cone flowers for those of you that wanted just the cone flowers. We'll do that. So I'm going to place this on this block. I've got my watch on here and it's going off. And I'm going to ink this up with soft stone. It's a nice light gray. And then I'm just going to stamp this off on the bottom, off to the one side. Let's zoom back in here so you guys can see this a little closer. Okay. And then we'll add the cone flowers on top. Just that nice gray, nice and peaceful. Add that right on top. I wonder if any of that pink is going to run. Probably not. There we go. And so then you just have a little bit of something that kind of coordinates, but you could write right over that because when that dries, look how light it gets. So we'll let that dry for a minute and you'll see it's going to get pretty light. You can also hit it with your heat tool to help it dry. But I actually like to let it air dry because, like I said, our, our ink dries very smooth. And when it dries, it's also spreading. Now, it's not spreading so that it gets blurry, but it's just filling in those little pockets as it dries. It just kind of blends out and dries. But that, in the meantime, that is my finished card. And I don't know, if can you guys see the shine on those stars? Can you see that, Tom? Star Hi. shining? Uh, tilt it again. Oh, yeah, when you tilt it back, yeah. Yeah? That's it. That's like... Okay, good. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure mm -hmm. that, you know, you go through all that work and then people can't see it and they're like, I don't know why you did that. So hopefully you guys were able to see that and we'll zoom in just a little bit more. There's my finished card for the evening. That was fun. Very fun. Well, this has been super fun. Sorry for the little blurry five minutes in there. Hopefully when Spectrum comes tomorrow, we'll, uh, we'll kick some butt. We'll, <laughs> you know, we won't. We'll just tell them, please make us faster. And uh, we'll figure out what's going on. They actually said when they were looking at it that they could see where things were slowing down and it is something that they can fix. So fingers crossed. All right, you guys. Well, Tom and I will be back on Thursday and I'm going to dig into the kit a little bit more on Thursday and hopefully more of you will have your kits by then so you can stamp along with me. If not, remember these videos live forever on my YouTube channel so you can always find them all in one place over on YouTube. Also, if you go to the Gina K Designs Facebook page and you click on videos, all of the lives will show up all on one page. There's a little tab on our Facebook page. So you'll be able to find all the videos in one place if you prefer Facebook. All right, you guys. Well, we'll be back, like I said, on Thursday at lunchtime here in the USA, in the Midwest, in old, good old Wisconsin. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. I love you all so very much. And I'll see you again mwah, real soon. Bye-bye.